Welcome once again to my channel, my YouTube channel, Tim Cooper, Cooper's Automotive. We've got a rear brake job on a 2003 Buick with Sabre. I'm going to show you how we do it, and uh, I've already got the wheels off, so uh, hey, let's rock. Let's get this thing going. Uh, first thing off, uh, got to get this caliper off of here, and it's got one bolt in the bottom here, which is a 12 millimeter. I've already loosened this side. So you want to take that bottom one out like that. There you go. It's 12. All right. And then you've got to take this one 13 millimeter out. This holds the emergency brake part of the caliper. The emergency brake's built into the caliper on this one. All right. So you got to get that out of there. All right. Then from there, it's going to rock the caliper up. And there's a, there's a pin back here that it guide that it slides on. And you're just going to slide it back right there. Comes off of there, and we'll lubricate this pin once we get this thing all apart. There we go. And just keep working it till you get it out of there. All right. And this thing will kind of hold itself because it's got the emergency cable there. Not worry about it hanging there. You want to get these brake pads out of here. You can see it's worn down to the indicator. That they're worn out. And you know, kind of pay attention that your indicator goes on the outside. So it's the outside brake pad I'm going back in. So we get that one out of there. And we got the inner one here. If it's a little tight to get them out of there, just take a screwdriver. You know, this one's kind of cool because this one's actually got an indicator on both sides. Usually they don't. We've got that. We've got to get this caliper bracket off of here. All right, it's got two, two bolts on the back. Dave, I don't know if you can get a shot of that. With the right, I'm going to kind of put my finger on that one. Right there, that one. And then there's one down here on the bottom. Probably can't see that one well. So you gotta take both of those out. Using those nice ratcheting mountain wrenches, you might be able to get an air ratchet in here. Let's see how tight this thing is. Not too bad. But this is, these are my favorites. Once you break a lid, you can probably even use a quarter inch little battery Milwaukee air ratchet, air ratchet, battery ratchet, and get it out of there. We got one of those, I'm going to set it on the lift here, and if we get the bottom one out, you'll see this bottom, you'll see this bracket come, start coming off of here. And they usually have Loctite on these two bolts that hold this bracket on. A little cloudy here in Clearwater, Florida today. Getting a little bit of rain. At the end of March, I'd love to be fishing, but I'm doing the next best thing that I love. All right, there's the cow bracket. I'm just going to set this on this rear control arm right here. We got a rotor. I'm going to take our rotor off of there. It's not stuck, which is nice. If it was stuck, you'd just tap it with a hammer on the outside edge and, and kind of rattle it loose. Another thing I want to show you is you want to make sure on this hub you don't have any rust specks behind here. This one's in good shape. But a speck of rust throws that rotor off. We're going to machine these rotors. This goes over, stud up like that. You can see it shines it up. Okay. 
Kind of in between them all right there. And same thing on your rotor surface right here. You want to make sure you don't have anything stuck in here. So I always go around it with this tool. Set it up on your machine, that way you know it's going to turn it through. Leave it outside. Here we are. We got that surface clean. We got the inner surface clean. And from here, we're just going to take a walk over the brake lathe and put it on the machine and uh, put a new finish on this. So let's go over and do that. Follow me, Dave, right over here. Got a shot of that nice Cooper's Automotive shirt. All right. All right, a little darker in this area. Here's what I do. This, this, this uh, adapter fits so many different rotors, makes it a lot easier. Put that on there, go around it with the chuck just like you would on a drill. And make sure that it's tight. Okay. Up here. Then you got your inside piece that fits. This is an old brake lathe, but these old 4,000 Amco brake lathes, they work forever. Put it on there like that. We've got to take the space up on the armor here. And you always put the uh, piece with a little rubber anti tatter so it don't make noise and put your nut on tight it up. And we got plenty of room between our brake cutting blades here. You can see that. A guy just broke off one of my wing nut tops here, so I've been having to use pliers to get that loose. So we've got, we got that. We'll go ahead and loosen this one up. Loosen that one. You got to put an anti chatter belt around the rotor. Again, if that thing chatters when you're cutting, that, then cutting blades will jump all over the place. And you'll have such a terrible surface, and it can do it to the point if you're not over here watching it and that thing starts chattering, you're buying a rotor. There's no ands, ifs, or buts about it. Alright, so put the chatter belt on it, like that. Now you want to run your lathe in. Rubber band, man. Turn your machine on, make sure this one's tight, put it on. And bring these, these cutting tips into the they just tuck it. You just hear them a little bit. And do the other side. Same thing there. Put those on there. Yeah. Now you want to run it all the way in. Sometimes when you get close to the inside, there's a ridge on it. You got to slow down. Get it louder. We're all the way through that now. Now we just want to take a little bit off of each one. So that's if we're going to cut like 4,000 off of each road. We bind this thing up to say zero. We're going to take equal amounts out of each side. So each mark is 2,000. So there's two. There's 4,000 right there. Tighten down your lock for your blade. Same thing over here. Bring it up. Zero it out right there. Two, four. We'll be buying a blue wing up to this, this lathe. You can see that. You got two cutting speeds on this one. You can cut them on fast. Preferably, I like to go slower. It makes it much better cutting cleaner surface on it. So you can see it start coming out. And it's machine in this road, and as it comes out, those blades put a new fresh surface on that rotor and makes it true. And 
okay? So we're gonna walk away from this while it's doing this, and we'll probably walk back to it, and then we'll go to the other side and take it apart. So let's do that. On the other side, y'all are crazy light. In Florida, you don't wanna use these things in Florida in the summertime, they burn you up. They're hot. But anyway, then you wanna get that 12 millimeter smoke out the bottom cow from there. Take it out. Put it in a nice safe hiding place so that you know where it is and you look for it later and you won't be able to find it. And then we'll bleep out all the cussing because I can't find the ball. Again, the emergency brake bolt right there. I'm going to take that one off. Let me get my quarter now. Go the battery in Milwaukee. Got that loose. Ah. Can't like that. Typically, we got to get that right out of there, but he is not strong enough for that. There we go. Got it enough. Get that little 13 millimeter out of there. Set it inside. Make sure you never put the bracket back on when we go together. Now we want to tilt this caliper up. Just like we did the other side. And we want to slide it off to this guy right there. There we are. Play that right there. Not hurting a thing. Again. Getting our brake pads out of there. Throwing our airplane parts somewhere close to the trash can. Now we got that bracket. Again, I showed you on the other side. 15 millimeters, get this caliper bracket off. Use air tools all the time while doing stuff. Yeah, it makes it easier. But I gotta mess around, man, because you know what? You can't keep the guns up if you don't use your arm strength. Yeah, being silly. So I got the top one out, the bottom one out of there. Take it out with your hand and you grab a hold of it. It's just, it ain't happening. Alright, so we got that one out. Again, I'm just going to set this up on the lower control arm, put my bolts on my lift right here. Got that done. Now, typically, when a car's never had brakes done, there's a retainer ring that are on these. You don't have to save them, but you got to get them off there. You just grab cutter flies and just cut them off and pull them off there and get them out of your way. So again, take a rotor out. Take a look at my hand rotors here. And you can see little rust specks in there. Like I said, you don't want any of that. <laughs> and the outside surface again. There we are. Got 
got to the pole. Now we're going to clean the hub area. Yeah, that does a nice, clean job. One of these days I'll get the precision cut matching where you actually cut the rotor on the car. I'd still, if I had that, I'd want to clean this rust specs off and do it anyway. So we've got this side apart. We've got our rotor right here. And I'm just going to drop this off at our brake lathe while we're waiting for the other one to turn. Actually, we're getting close over here. Always watch this one because we're going to cut this belt. Stand the belt in two and get close and turn the machine off. These belts get expensive. I still end up cutting half to buy new ones. Stop right there. You hear it hitting already. Get up that last little edge. Here we go. Okay, let's unlock this rotor. Now, wait a minute. I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit. We're going to put a unidirectional finish on this rotor. I did that with a little die grinder and a little three end wheel. Turn the machine back on. Put the other side. And guess what, guys? I want to show them this. Right here, we didn't quite get enough off this rotor. It's shiny here, but didn't hit that spot. So we've actually got to machine this rotor a little bit more. All right. Might have been paying attention. I've just seen that. They do make smaller belts. I'm going to try one. I don't particularly like them. They're hard to get on here a lot of times. Playing with these little rubber bands. I hate them for that reason. That's why I usually use the other one, but you don't cut up your good bill. This is when you wish you had poor hands. Alright, we got that back on there. So we gotta do it again. Cut this rotor one more time. Back in. I already turned the bits back out, so you gotta get back in there to just touch them. The other side. There we go. And I always cut both sides. Again, we we'll line up this to our zero. Take another four thousandth out of it. I'll just tighten that. Step to a zero. Two, four. There we go. Turn the machine back on. Alright, so we get to leave that alone. Let it do its thing again. Let's go back to the car. So check this out. Right there. Spider. I swear, I don't know what kind of spider that is, but it might be like a black widow. I have been bitten quite a few times. Right, we're gonna blow that mess out of there. Nice to have a good can of bug spray around when you're doing this stuff. Back to the other side. Yeah, we got the same thing here. Spiders. 
doing your gig. Let's give it a I feel safe or not, see a bunch of babies coming out after me to attack me. Alright. Um, when you've got emergency brakes that are driven by the caliper, there's a tool that fits into those two little notches right there. You gotta screw that caliper back in, you can't just push it in because it won't go. That tool looks like this for this particular one. Get it in a notch. Pull it back like that and get a wrench for that. I'm gonna grab it with a pair of die locks here. Start screwing that piston back into the seat. Keep the hat and tight at the same time as I do. It's going in pretty easily. You see that piston moving in? I'm gonna seat that piston all the way back. There we are. It's all the way in. Now let's get our tool out of here. Place it over here. We'll use it on the other side. All right, so we got that screwed back in. The motor's over there being cut. You can kind of hear it. Got a special lubricant. Brake grease by CRC. I'm going to lubricate the uh, guide pen. We can find it again. A little piece right here. We can't put it on yet because we're waiting on our rotor. It's a nice loop on that. Now, this one also has a slide in it on the bottom. Got to slide it out and move it up. You don't want these things to stick and wear your brakes out. Slide it back in. Just make sure you get your dust piece covered back over to Keep the water and the moisture out of there. Keep the grease in. There we go. There we go. Alright. While we're waiting on that rotor, let's take a walk over to the other side and go ahead and, and turn that other piston back in. We'll hope that one doesn't come back out. Sometimes they will. But just for the sake of saving time, we're a little dark. I did bring my light over again, fit the tool up in there. I know you can't see this too good, but you got a good picture of it on the other side, so we're just repeating. Back again. Let's see if this one's going to look nice. She's going pretty easy. Yeah, it was. surface. Now we are going to put that unit you know, directional finish on it. So brake blades on. Alright. Turn this off. 
Let it take this another longer here. Okay. Got a nice new finish. Got a unidirectional finish on that. Guys, that helps with reducing noise when they apply their brakes. So don't leave that off and make shortcuts when you're doing brake time. Now I'm going to go ahead and start the rotor on the other side. It's like time saving is all. You just get this one going while you're doing the other work. You kind of listen in the back of your ear, back of your mind. You can hear it over there, it's machining, and you know when it's done. So we'll go ahead and slide this one on and get it started. business 20 years and one of the first pieces of equipment I swore when I went in business I said I'm going to have my own brake leg and uh, I've had this thing I've said since then 20 years it was old but I bought it it needs some it needs a little boots and some repairs but she still works really well things have changed through the years say the new pro cut on the car matching rotor system it's going to be a must I'm going to have to buy one Put this little silencing belt on this one. There we are. It's back on. I lost my handle. I don't know where it went. This piece is falling apart on this one. Get a little cutting tip till it just touches this one. Get on the other side. Zeros, two, four. I'm going to take six out of this because that one other rotor trick more to get out of it. You can cut up the six thousands out of a rotor, but never any more than that. Okay, that's six on both sides. Now we're just going to walk away and put this rotor on. So follow me over here. right here. The bolts start at the back and find that other bolt. That's when you say, darn it, where's that bolt? It's been an hour looking for this stupid thing. There we go. Started when I tighten up those two bolts. And again, this is their 15 millimeter. I've also got to put a motor mount in this car. I'm not sure if we'll video that or not. Okay, adaptive one. I love these pads. 
Got a special composite for the front and the rear pad. They're different. I think they're the only one that makes it. It comes with a lubricant pack, but I used my own. We showed you doing that. It comes with all the hardware. The nice thing about this hardware, get it out of this package here. It's really good hardware because it's it's Teflon coated. This one's bent actually. You see the black Teflon coating on it. I get tangled up in here. Or you can put your new clips on it. Again, if you throw this stuff out, here's the old one. Top and bottom just sits inside the caliper bracket. Just gonna throw those over there. Yep, I use your new components. Anti-rattles. Silencing. You don't want your customer applying the brake and hearing those awful squeal sounds. Okay, we got those clipped in. I believe that's sort of color coded. We got a nice backing plate on and it tells you which one is the inner and outer. The blue is the outer pad. And interesting enough, these no, they didn't come with it. Well, this one comes with one indicator for when the pad wears out. It didn't come for one on each side. So your red is your inner pad. Get up inside there. All right. Let's go there. That time you put a nut on the outside. Just kind of hold your loader in place. You've already moved the pins, get the caliper up, get back up on the pin there. And just slide it on. And you're going to rotate it down. And push that little adjuster back so it gets down in the slot. There you are. The bottom caliper ball. That's a 12 millimeter. Kind of odd. I mean, 03 to see a 12. Tighten the bottom one. There we go. We got this one bracket again for that emergency brake. Right here, I heard stuff go flying. I hope I find that nut. That's a 13 millimeter. Just right back into that lower control arm. See if there's no walkie release for the day. Alright, that's good. So we're all together here. We expect that always let you work for you. Just work order. Put your work over. All right, and nothing going on here. One little clip on this ABS come off. Put that back in there. And uh, we're gonna do the same thing to the other side. So uh, I don't need to show you that. You can do one side, you can do the other. It's redundancy. All right, so thanks again for watching. Uh, Tim Cooper for Sick Cars Company Recuperation.